Today, we set out to answer the question, in 2024, does size really matter? We're shooting the 2024 bows, shorter axle to axle length versions. We're gonna shoot them, see what we see, find out what we find out, and bring you all along. It's gonna be a great day, let's go. We're back, round two, bow wizard in the house. Here, the question of the day is, does size really matter? I think that argues a lot, to be honest. A small guy probably says no, and a big guy probably says yes. What are you gonna do? <laughs> and I like a longer bow, so, yeah. and I'm not short. There's that. Bow building geometry, basic use case is, longer the riser, the more stable the bow. That's why target bows are long. This is more of what I would call an, e an Eastern versus a Western bow environment, because typically, not always, but a Western bow is typically a longer axle to axle bow because it's not being hunted in tree stands and ground blinds as much. Typically a shot farther away where accuracy is a little more of a revisionist need. But your short axle to axle bows are phenomenal for tree stand ground blind hunting or Eastern style bows. Whatever type of hunting you're doing is gonna be relevant to what you would pick or should pick. There's need for both and a guy really should probably have two, just being honest. But if you can only swing one, it's for what you should be primarily hunting for. I think you can get these short bows sneaky accurate and uh, I'm gonna test more with that this year. Today we're gonna run through them, test them, get you some features, get you some speeds, and uh, have a great day. We threw an old carbon bow into the mix this week. First impressions, just a beautifully designed bow. Carbon, I haven't shot a lot of carbon bows, so I'm interested to see how it feels. Everything is simple and clean, which I like and appreciate. Let me flip the camera around. Josh, you got any tech specs you wanna tell them about on this baby? So there's a lot of new changes to this bow. Technically, they didn't make this bow before. This is a shorter version than they've made in the past. 32 was like their short one. They added a quiver integration for a two-piece quiver, which was something their carbon was lacking. There was no way to attach a two-piece quiver to it. A reverse assist roller guard. Uh, that's a first for them on a carbon bow. Picatinny mount front, which you can remove if you want a direct mount sight, not use the Picatinny, but it is there. And rear mount IMS or integrate style systems. Still has the chim and exchange system that doesn't require you to take the axle out, which is sweet. And you can also twist your yokes a little bit if you want in there for tuning. So I mean, it's EC2 cam, same cam they had last year. This is the only cam that comes on this bow, unless you have it built through the Pro Shop. You can have other cams put on this if you want in the Pro Shop, but there, I'm sure there's a, a upcharge for that option on a already $2,000 bow sounds like a lot. This is not their part, just FYI, this is the Hoyt piece, but it does happen to work on it. You can set it down like so. How light is light? How light are we talking? 3.8 pounds, homie. Oh, dang. Light. And in your testing, that's a real weight, huh? That's a real weight. Yeah, it's not fudged. I wanna say it was it was either right on or within 10, which we call it. Is in the carbon, it is the only US made carbon bow. All the other ones are made somewhere else. Good job, guys. Hey. Appreciate that. Way to go. I'm a carbon bow virgin, I think. I don't think I've ever shot a carbon bow. Well, this will be a good, pleasant first experience <laughs> for you. <laughs> now, 29 is my standard draw length. It feels like I have to lean into the string a little bit. It's a short axle to axle bow. So would I go longer draw length nope. or? No, nope. you kind of modify how you hold it in okay. general. Guys, all these bows today are set up 29 inch draw, 70 pounds. We tested them apples to apples to apples to apples. I want to do a really good job today trying to help you guys sift through some of the things you might want to look for. PSE Mach 30, EC2 cam. Back wall feels very nice, very, it's not going anywhere, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I can really. It's got a great pocket. Yeah. And it is adjustable up to 90%. There's a bunch of different settings on the let off. 
draw cycle on this little baby. It feels nice. It feels, I don't feel any dump into the back wall. Back wall is very solid. I do feel it a little bit in my front hand, how there's just a little less stability with a shorter bow. Yeah, and, and, um, and lightweight too, so you're gonna run into that in both yeah. experiences. And you're gonna be able to clean that up with your stabilizers and stuff, but mm -hmm. this is a very clean feeling grip as well. And if you're into mismashing, a little Frankenstein style, <laughs> you can uh, put your Hoyt bipod on the front. No nipple of destiny though. Well, you can't have everything. <laughs> Go down the line, grab that uh, lift right there. It's gonna be the closest in weight. So as you go up there, getting heavier and heavier. Matthew's lift, 29.5. I will say that a first impression is that riser does feel a little more like this, a little less. A little less wiggle, well, wiggle, 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 yeah. Well, part of that is your, uh, how long that riser is, even though the bow's only 29 inches, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to give you an incredibly stable bow and still be in a short platform. That riser's 30 inches long on a 29 and a half inch bow. Yeah. Uh, your average comparison's probably gonna be three inches shorter than that. One thing that's a little curious about Matthews is they put new strings on, which I'm really excited to hear how people do testing these over time. They keep leaving this grip on, and everybody that I really trust as an archer. The first thing they do, they rip the grip off and they put on side plates or they put on a B-reel grip or they shoot off the riser. What's your favorite Matthews grip style? The last bow I had that was a Matthews had, I put a B-reel grip on it. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it still wasn't quite like perfect for my hand size and where things sit on me, but it was as close as I could get. But now they do make a nice little clean, slim, two-piecer, and that's better than what they have. It all depends on how your hand fits on it. Everybody's different in that regard. Limb legs, I love having these on. Shot Matthews for long enough to know that I love having these on. Also to know that you will donate them to the woods if you hunt thick stuff with them on, because these get pushed back by branches and things like that. Just food for thought. They're great to keep your, your bow off the ground though. String angle seems a little easier to get on my nose. It's because it's a longer end-to-end -end bow at draw. Interesting. Because the riser is so long, it does, the limb doesn't move as much. Do you think there's any merit to this wanting to pop out of my hand a little more than the 33? I didn't notice a difference myself, but every, everyone's different. Feels a little more like it just wants to pop out of my hand, which I kind of like, honestly, because Josh is always telling me I need to push more, so. You'll feel it more <laughs> when that happens. Ah, push it. So I'm gonna grip this one a little bit, see if it rattles. This is old Josh trick. The overall draw cycle I think feels pretty nice. Honestly, if I'm comparing it to the PSE, PSE is probably a little smoother all the way back. This one does have a little more fall into the valley. Draw cycle, I don't think at the end of the day should be your most important category of what's important to you because whatever bow you choose, all of these are great bows, Whatever bow you choose, you're gonna get used to the draw cycle. It's a little bit of a preference, but also you need to like it. I like it. It's pretty, pretty tempting little package. Pretty tempting package. Design features that stand out to me on a Matthews. Firstly, it's a beautiful bow. You can see there's a lot going on in the engineering. Secondly, and this is what I think is a bit of a unique advantage for Matthews, is they always make these really long risers. They put a new cam in this bow as well. And what I like about the new cam, when I get it all the way back, with the previous cam, I would get a little, little speed check every once in a while. And granted that, rightfully, I'm sure was a me problem. It's nice to just confidently draw the bow and know that when it's back there, it's gonna sit there, especially being that it's a hunting bow. What do you think, Josh Man? Well, let's see. They expanded the range on the mods. So these are all the way down to 55, all the way up to 80 now. This assembly is rock solid, way better system than they had before of a way to attach your cam system to your limb. So there's screws through there, bracket through there, instead of drilling a hole through the side of the limb and trying to run an axle through it. Much more solid. There's another bow manufacturer too that runs something similar to this with great durability and overall stability. There's just a ton of crap cut out of this riser. I don't think they could cut more metal out of this riser. I don't think it's possible. You wouldn't be left with anything for stability. So they like cut everything they could possibly cut out of this bow and match grade strings. Good 
high quality strings that so far we've seen incredible, incredible use on it. Our uh, buddy Dan over on Elk Shape has had his since August and they're actually holding up phenomenally well and have shot a lot. I don't see any serving separation through the cable, which is where I would expect to see it. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. Definitely worth putting a couple of shots through it at your local shop. Okay, who are we gonna do next, Josh Jones? Alpha X 30. Alpha X. I shot the Hoyt VTM, hunted with it all year. It was a cool hunting bow. They did a couple things that makes this one different. A little wider in the bottom. Some cam stuff that I think is actually more important than I initially thought it was when I heard about it. Quarter inch draw length adjustments, adjustable back wall, adjustable let off, 75, 80, 85. Just a lot you can do with it to really dial it in for you. New string as well. I'm curious to see how it holds up. My string at the end of last year ended up with a little bit of serving separation. Guys, if you're gonna buy a $1,400 $1, bow, like it would be nice if you could trust the strings that come on it. So I'm excited to see how these do over the course of time. Crap load of machining work, like yeah. way more machining this year. Uh, how the quiver attaches is different. It attaches lower, so it allows you to low profile this even more. Mm -hmm. Go sticks, bipod, been around on rifles for a while. We're getting them now on bows. Uh, this just needs a little loosen, a little crank, and you can tuck them back away. From what we've seen with these products yet, it seems to be the best iteration because we have flexibility where we can put it, and then we can tuck it away to hunt with. And it's screwed on, so we're not going to kick it off in the Thule's. Hoyt Alpha X 30. Let's see what we see here. First impression, similar to Matthew's, the riser wants to hold nice and steady. I didn't get much of this feel. I feel like because I've shot a Hoyt for the last six months, I feel like I might be a little biased towards the draw cycle. That's yeah, normal. But all of these had pretty clean draw cycles so far, so. Nothing's felt overly aggressive. Feels steady, not much chatter. And to be honest, all the bows I shoot, I feel like a Hoyt and a Matthews, although this might be a little unpopular for a lot of you people that are stuck with one brand, they feel very similar to me coming out of my hand. Like they don't want to bounce forward. There's not a lot of vibration. I think that's riser geometry. Yeah. Just me. Yeah, probably riser geometry. Yeah. Get gripped up. It's just not bouncing around at all. I don't feel any any serious ringing. I would feel pretty confident in this, building it out with some stabilizers and shit. It just, it feels very stable, like for a 30 inch. Like I wanna double check to see that I'm not shooting the 33 or 34 because it does feel like those longer riser bows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say the bipod, probably a must, not a should. It's just really nice to be able to set your bow down and I didn't talk about that. So when you are setting your bow down, we have this thing called the nipple of destiny right here. It's gonna prevent your cam from taking the damage it would if you were just putting that cam consistently on the ground. So just a little extrusion that's preventing your cam from, yeah, getting chewed up. There you go. Bowtech Core SS today. For a while the internet thought you were like a Bowtech sponsored shooter, Josh. Why is that? Oh, they still think I'm a Matthew sponsored shooter too, which oh, I don't year, get. Oh, this year you're Matthew sponsored no, shooter? No, like it, even when I was shooting, like even when I shot Bowtech, it's like this guy's just Mr. Matthews and has been forever. And I'm like, dude, I've been shooting a Bowtech for the last five years. I haven't made a decision on this year yet, but. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Lots of cool technology for the at home person that wants to tune. This little thing allows you to move your wheels left and right. They call that deadlock, basically just crack a set screw, move your wheeling left and right. Super nice for a person that wants to tune. Like I'm not an experienced tuner, but I'm confident setting one of these on the counter, doing the basics. Nice to be able to do that without having a bow press. Moving your grip around, pretty cool. I shot the Reckoning Gen 2 all year this year. It's still my target bow. I kicked this out about halfway. It's just a level of customization that's nice to have. Now one bit of feedback and design that hasn't changed yet is this rubber piece here gets a lot of pressure when you pull the grip out and on my reckoning it it folded off. That would be a constructive piece of criticism for Bowtech is like if you do kick it out that probably won't last. So a little bit of tape or whatever you could put over it. Nice little modification. Dovetail through the riser this year. Kind of interesting. Right now a lim little limited on product selection. Only uh, black gold. That's it folks. Yeah. None of that fits. 
Yeah. They are going to sell this as a separate part so you can integrate to any black gold site. But for now, that's all we have. Nice. It'll be interesting to see how other site manufacturers will adapt and make a product for this. But anytime you can move things into the center, just streamlines it. Less vibration, less weight away from it, balance. Bowtech bows have the flexibility to go comfort or performance in the cam. Comfort feels like a more comfortable cycle for a lot of people. Performance feels more aggressive, but also shoots faster. And we're in performance because that's how we tested these bows this year. Let's try it out. Dang. So super smooth SS, even in performance, is more smooth. Interesting. I want to say it was the lowest vibration that I tested, but I know Hoyt was right there real close. That surprised me. That surprised me a little bit. Draw cycle doesn't feel aggressive in performance, so I'm very curious what kind of speeds we'll get out of this. I'll make sure I grip this next one and see how it feels. This to me feels like most of these, it's similar to the other cam styles where it's pull, 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 kind of gently rolls into the back wall. It's not an aggressive heavy pull, it's just a nice pull. Yeah, very little ringing. Perhaps am the most surprised by this just because I shot the I shot the Core SR previously, and the Core SR definitely felt aggressive, felt pull, 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 and then it breaks over. Mm -hmm. And this felt felt nice. And as well, I would say this felt this didn't have a lot of the vertical chatter either. So if I'm ranking these and how they held, Bowtech held nicely, Hoyt held nicely, Matthews held nicely, PSE had just a little felt like a little more of a speed wobbly type feel. Shorter riser, lighter physical weight, okay. you're gonna get that. That's something you can totally clean up with your stabilizers, make a shoot and point for you, but just bare bows, that's how they felt. Let's uh, go kick it to the speed test because I think that's, I'm very curious about what kind of speeds we're gonna get out of these bows. Speed test, Bowtech, Core SS, super smooth, sneaky smooth. I was very surprised by that. And when I think smooth, I don't think fast. So let's see, uh, see what kind of speed we push out of this thing. Two eighty three point eight. Two eighty three point eight out of a smooth bow. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, I think that that's kind of a sleeper, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a sleeper from from what I came into this thinking. Well, and your guy, that, your guy that might have four or five bows set up for the year, so maybe that's you your, never know. Maybe that's your tree stand saddle hunting setup. Maybe Hoyt Alpha X thirty. Two eighty point two. Two eighty point two. Slower. That was very similar to what we got out of the Alpha X thirty three. Yeah. So very consistent across their platform. One not necessarily faster than the other. Ooh, this is a big decision. We want to go Mach thirty or lift right here. Let's go Mach thirty. Mach thirty. Reputation for speed right here. All right. Traditionally, yes. Thirty inch bow. After drawing them all, the cam definitely does feel a little more aggressive. Yeah. But there's, it's not. Yeah, you get used to it. It's not bad, bad. That's their easiest pulling one. Yeah. And their grip is nice. Mm -hmm. 289.4. She fast. Leader in the clubhouse. Definitely, after shooting these all side by side, definitely a little more squirrely in the hand. That's me being honest. Well, that's weight, though. Yeah. Weight is a reflection of that. And you can add weight. So that's something that mm -hmm. you guys have the option to do. Grand finale. Matthews lift, 29.5. Gonna be a lot of people shooting this bow in 2024. I'll be shocked if there's not. This new Garmin right here, we've gotten to shoot quite a few arrows through this new Garmin. It seems very reliable. It's like the size of a GoPro so far, so good. Numbers have been very steady. Here we go, Matthew's lift, 29.5. My hunting arrow, 440 grains, used it all year long. And it's kind of a good middle of the road arrow because I'm 29 inch draw, 440 grains, kind of a middle of the road. And based on where you're at, you could get an educated guess on what this bow could do for you or any of these bows could do for you. Two ninety point two. Ah, dang, what just, what just happened right here? All flagship bows, I don't think there were any real sleepers in here. 
I was surprised by the Botec Core SS. Snuck up on me being in performance mode, John, that smooth. Really surprised at Hoyt, Botec, and Matthews. They all held very nice vertically. I think the Mach 30 is an interesting bow because it is such a light platform. It offers some real options for a person who wants to be a run and gun type hunter. It's where you be, want to put your weight. It's going to be a great bow for the right person. Any buying advice for the people at home? Honestly, they're all good product. You can't really complain too much about what's being put out today as opposed to what was being made 10 years ago. They've all made really big jumps and really good innovations. And there are some that are emphasizing more on trying to help the do-it-yourself guy. And there are some that are emphasizing more on weight or, you know, special features or what have you. But everyone's making a really good bow. Make sure you're trying more than two bows. That's all I would say that at least. Like, try at least three or four because you'll probably get surprised at the results you find when you add one in there that maybe you didn't think about. And that's important. One thing I would add to that is don't get married to the draw cycle. You yeah. are going to adapt to that after you've shot 50 to 100 arrows. What is ultimately the best platform for your use case? What's your utility? What features are important to you? Do you want to tune at home? These are all questions. If you answer it, it can kind of help you narrow down towards an answer. I'm excited because I'm going to shoot all the bows this year and I'm going to figure out what's going to be the best hunting bow for 2024. You going to announce your 2024 hunting bow right now? No. <laughs> no, it'll be a while before I decide what I'm using. Yeah. I got to test them. Anyway, guys, we appreciate you watching. Josh has a YouTube channel. We're going to record a podcast after this. So if you want the long form version, we're going to dig deep. That'll be linked down below as well in the description. And we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Big bash here when we get there. Help us out. Hit the subscribe button. It means a lot. And um, we will catch you back here for the next one.